A couple of weeks ago, I did a tour of the fish tank barn and wanted to talk to you today about a topic that I haven't covered in quite a while. And that's how I manage filtration, heating, humidity, and water changes in the fish barn. So let's jump in and take a look. Filtration is the lifeblood of any fish tank and the fish barn is no different. In the majority of the tanks, I run sponge filters, all of which are from the aquarium co-op. I really like that these filters do not clog and they're very effective at filtering most of my aquariums. For each story of the fish barn, I do run a PVC air loop, which is powered by a linear piston air pump. I've tapped into these air lines with stainless steel valves so that you can control the airflow to each individual tank. For my larger tanks, I do run hang on back filters with the CCAM title being my filter of choice. Depending on the tank, both of these filtration methods have worked quite well here in the barn. The fish barn is located in Michigan where winters have been known to get quite cold. And one question I often get asked is if I heat the fish room or heat individual tanks. And the answer is really both. For the majority of the tanks, I just heat the room using the Stiebel Eltron 1500 watt electric heater. This is hooked up to a thermostat that I run around 70 to 75 degrees, depending on the time of year. I do, however, choose to heat some of the tanks, and this depends on the species and where the tank is located in the room. For example, I do heat my Cyprochromis tank since it's near the door and in a cooler part of the fish room that does get some drafts. I don't run as many heaters in the upstairs portion of the barn since that area is generally a few degrees warmer than the downstairs. In the summer months, it does get warm enough to require air conditioning. For air conditioning, I run this portable AC unit in the upstairs of the barn with its exhaust being expelled by a pipe that leads outside of the barn. Managing humidity is another important factor in any fish room. To accomplish this, I run two separate dehumidifiers. The one that you see here runs the upstairs portion and there's a separate unit that runs the downstairs. Both are plumbed into drains, which drain outside of the fish barn. If you're planning a large fish room, I would highly recommend a dehumidifier that can be set up to self-drain. Emptying the reservoirs when they get full gets very tiring very quickly. So let's now talk about one of the most time-saving aspects that I've set up here in the barn, and that's my auto water change system. The system itself is actually quite simple. I have water that's plumbed from the house into the barn. Before that water goes into any of the tanks, it passes through a filtration system that has two sediment filters and a carbon filter that filters out chlorine. No need for any additives. The water then passes into a 55 gallon barrel that is controlled by a float switch so it doesn't overfill. In the 55 gallon barrel, there are pumps that pump water into the individual tanks in the fish barn through a series of PVC pipes that are running throughout the room. Each of these PVC pipes has a small connecting hose that connects it to each of the individual tanks. The pumps are then controlled by two Casa Wi-Fi timers that run the pumps for about three minutes twice a day. Much like the air system, the pumps are set up on two separate systems, one for the downstairs and one for the upstairs. All of the tanks in the fish barn are drilled with overflows that are plumbed into drains that drain outside of the building. Actually, it works pretty simply. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the systems that make the backbone of the fish barn and make it operate. If you're looking to do a large fish room of your own, I hope this video gave you some ideas. So with that, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.